Kathy. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'll be sharing a couple of different techniques. Uh, the first one is I'll be showing you how to create one background panel using two background stamps and then I'll show another way to use the same background stamps and end up with a completely different look. So the products that I'll be using today are the braided stamp set the cross stitch hearts background stamp and the winter roses background stamp the winter roses background stamp does come as one big stamp but i cut it apart so that i could use the images separately so anyway to get started i placed the cross stitch hearts background stamp onto my craft mat and inked it up with tattered rose distress oxide ink and i then flipped over my cardstock on top of the stamp and used a piece of scratch paper to rub over that to get a really good transfer of the ink. The cardstock is 110 pound Nina Classic Crest cardstock and it's cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. The one thing that I love about this background stamp is, well, A, all of the texture that you get from it, but also the stamp is just slightly larger than a card front panel, so you'll get the image from corner to corner, end to end, top to bottom. Anyway, moving right along, after I stamped the, back, the big background stamp, I grabbed the cluster of roses from the Winter Roses background, and I stamped directly on top of the cross stitch hearts using Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Ink. And to kind of give you an idea of how my brain works, I was checking out the fall runways from New York Fashion Week. And don't get me wrong, I am by no means a fashionista. I mean, let's face it, I pretty much live in yoga pants and t-shirts. But I do like to check out Fashion Week and to see what the designers do to get an idea of colors and patterns and textures. And I noticed that bold flowers were common among many of the designers. And there was one in particular where they paired a dress that had a big floral pattern with a kind of like a very textured tweed type of jacket. So that is where my inspiration came from for this background. And at first, I really wasn't too sure that the roses were going to work on top of that background because the roses are so very detailed and the cross stitch hearts background is so very textured. But I decided to give it a shot and I was really happy with how this turned out. So after I had stamped the roses, I grabbed clean water and a paintbrush and just started to paint in the roses. Since the Distress Oxide inks are reactive to water, all I did was brush over it really very quickly to get that vintage photo ink to bleed a little bit. The trick to doing this, however, is you wanna make sure that your paintbrush is wet, but not dripping wet, and it has to be more than damp because it you do need to have enough water to get the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink to start to move around. And I did notice that it softened the background stamp, the cross stitch hearts behind the roses just enough where they're still visible, but it just worked out wonderfully. And then mixing the Vintage Photo with the Tattered Rose, you kind of ended up with this really soft, vintagey color. I can't even, I don't even know how to describe that color. Anyway, after I was done painting in the roses, I set that off to the side to dry, and then I stamped one of the images from the braided set in a dark brown Copic Safe ink onto a piece of Cougar Super Smooth cardstock and started coloring in her hair. Now, coloring hair is not necessarily one of my strengths, but the way that this image is drawn made it really easy. I started with YR20 and put that up kind of like at the top of her head just so I would remember to leave that area lighter so I would have a nice highlight there. And then I, down below the braided part, I just followed the drawn lines just to make sure that I had some highlights in at the bottom of her hair underneath the braid. 
Then I came in with E33 and just started to do a flicking motion. I did it from the very top of her head down just a little bit, maintaining that highlight and the maintaining that center highlight. And then kind of traced around the braid with that just so I could see the detail a little bit better for my coloring. Then I came in with YR23 and again, I am not thinking about what I'm doing. I'm literally just doing a flicking motion, but I'm also following the direction of the lines that are drawn in for me. Once I was done with the YR23, I came in with YR21 and started to blend some of those out. And it wasn't until I started to bring in my much darker colors that I actually started to pay better attention to where I was adding the color. So after the YR21, I come in with the E35, and I, this is where I kind of start paying a little bit closer attention to what I'm doing because this color is so dark well, it's not really dark, but it's darker. So it'll be a little bit more difficult to blend if I get heavy handed, which is a tendency of mine. So I'm paying closer attention to where I'm putting down this color and I'm concentrating it above the braid and below the braid. And then the areas where the hair is overlapping for the braid. And then I add a little bit down towards the bottom of her hair. And again, I'm just following the lines that are drawn in for me. So this, the way these images are drawn, it does make it really very easy to color in here and you can still get all of the depth and the texture and the highlights and the lowlights. So once I was done with the E35, I thought that I could use even more contrast. So I jumped up to E37 and added that in again above the braid and below the braid and at the very top of her head. And I'm being very careful at the top of her head because I really want to make sure that I keep that center highlight to make sure that her head actually looks like it's round and not and so it doesn't look too flat. So with the E37 I use that very sparingly and then I blend the colors out a little bit just to soften some of the harsher edges. Once I was done with the coloring I decided to start working on the inside of the card which is not something I do very often but I really wanted to bring some of the texture from the front of the card to the inside of the card. So with the same Tattered Rose ink I just inked up the bottom fourth of the stamp and then placed a piece of cardstock on top of that. I just wanted to have the very bottom of the cardstock have that texture on it and again I placed my cardstock on top and then with a piece of scratch paper rubbed over that to get the ink to transfer. Then I place that panel in my Misty to stamp my sentiment and um, I'm going to perform a little bit of surgery here and snip off the bottom part of the sentiment so that I can have it on one line. And the sentiment reads, you are absolutely. So I lined that up and then added in the word fabulous underneath that closed my misty door, picked up the stamps, and I inked that up with Versafine Claire Pinecone ink and stamped the sentiment. I adhered that to the inside of a top folding A2 sized note card that I made from a piece of dark brown cardstock. By this time, my background panel was completely dry, so I adhered that to the front of the card using my tape runner. And I had die cut a piece of cardstock with a wonky stitch rectangle die. And I used an ink blending brush to add a tiny little bit of the tattered rose ink just so that white cardstock wasn't so white. I adhered that to a piece of brown cardstock that's cut just slightly larger. I cut the image out using my scan and cut machine. And I put that down using my tape runner and then I thought, no, that needs to be popped up. So I ended up pulling that off and adding some foam tape. At this point, I thought that the card was pretty much done, but I was digging through my little basket of embellishments and came across these really tiny pearls. And I thought that that would be the perfect embellishment to add along the top of the braid. And that finishes up my first card. I'll have everything linked in the description box below and I'll have more information over on my blog as well. Moving on to 
the next three cards, which I'm actually going to only finish one of them and I'm not going to show the coloring again because I used the same color markers and I pretty much used the same technique. Anyway, I had some scraps of cardstock and they measure five and a half by one and a quarter ish. They're maybe a little bit wider than one and a quarter. And I thought this would be a really good way to use up some of those scraps. So I stamped the same cluster of roses using the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. And I randomly stamped them and I tried to get them fairly close together, but I did want to have a little bit of white space in between the roses. And after I had stamped them on all three strips of cardstock, I used an ink blending brush with the Tattered Rose Distress Oxide ink just to add a little bit of color. And I did try and concentrate the ink on the roses themselves just so that they would be a little bit more pink than the space between the stamped images, if that makes any sense. Then I took another piece of four and a quarter by five and a half cardstock and inked up the cross stitch hearts background again with the tattered rose and stamped that down. And I did end up cutting down that background panel into strips as well. And I made sure to keep them the same size because I wasn't quite sure of the placement. I knew that I wanted to keep these three cards a little bit more clean and simple. So I did cut the cross stitch hearts into strips about the same width, a little more than one and a quarter. Um, and it turned out that I ended up not even needing them to be that wide. So to put the card together, I have a piece of white cardstock that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. I adhered the strips with the roses on the left hand side with my tape runner. And then I cut down some brown cardstock into really thin strips. It's about an eighth of an inch wide. And I used liquid glue to adhere that. And I made sure to butt it up right next to the panel with the stamped roses. Now I kind of did a little bit of measuring ahead of time. And I knew that I needed to have the white panel be two and a quarter inches. So I grabbed a ruler and I used my pencil just to make a little bit of a tick mark. And then I adhered a second strip of brown cardstock over, over on that side so that I had that white panel going down the very center of the card. Then I took one of the strips with the cross stitch heart stamped on it and used my liquid glue to cover up that right hand side of the panel. And as you can see, it hangs off the edge, which is not a big deal. Um, I just used my paper trimmer to trim off the excess. And then I wanted to cut that panel down just a tiny bit more so that there would be a brown border around it when I adhered that to the front of my card. So I took about an eighth of an inch, not actually, I didn't even take an eighth of an inch because I wanted the border to be really, really small. So once I had that trimmed up, I put that into my Misty and lined it up so that I could stamp my sentiments. I put the braided images just as a placeholder so that I could line up my sentiments. And for this one, after I had the sentiments lined up how I wanted them and picked them up with my Misty door, I took off the word absolutely and removed the braided image. And then for these sentiments, I wanted to stay with the vintage photo. So I used the vintage photo ink to stamp them out. And the reason that I removed the word absolutely is so I could get it just a tiny bit closer to the words you are, otherwise it was gonna hang off that edge where that other brown strip is. So after I stamped you are, I lined up the word absolutely, inked that up, and then decided to ink up the word fabulous a second time and stamped that down. Then I adhered that panel with my tape runner to the front of a top folding A2 size note card, again, made from brown cardstock. And then I added some foam tape onto the braided image and dropped that right down into the center. That finishes up my cards for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.